Okay, hello. So in today's video, we'll look at the limits of functions. Okay, so we said that, uh, uh, meanwhile, we're going to be considering real valued functions. Of course, you should know. Okay, so whenever we have a function and we want to discuss the concept of limits, a very important concept. Now, limit is written like this. The limit of f of x as s goes to a is given as a particular value say l so if i <clears throat> if you are giving something like the limit sorry the limit of say x squared as x goes to 2 okay so that's how to you know read this and then it has to be a particular value and of course this is equal to 4 and as we continue we are going to see how that is now, in general, if you are given the limit of f of x as x goes to a, in general, this limit is actually equal to f of a. That's substituting your a directly as your x, like normal evaluation. However, we have some exceptions, uh, kinds of functions that we will find and we will be expected to do something different instead of just direct substitution. The implication is that if you do a direct substitution, you are not going to get a reasonable value. You are going to be getting, you know, a non-existing value since we are talking about real valued functions. And so in such cases, we will do stuff like factoring. You can also, you know, be expected to do things like uh, what there is a rule that guides us to handle some of those cases which we call the L'Hopital's rule and all of that we are going to see in in our videos okay so now let's look in general what uh, uh, limit is all about for instance if you have the limit of say 4x 4 into x minus 1 all over x squared minus 1 as s goes to 1 now you discover what I am saying here that if I put my x as 1 here I am definitely going to have 1 minus 1 which is 0 and so that's going to give me 0 all over 1 squared is 1 minus 1 is 0 and 0 over 0 is not a reasonable number in fact we call this an indeterminate uh, case okay so it has no reasonable value so what do you do when you have this kind of case that's where we use the Olopita's rule and there are cases where you can also you know factorize when you factorize you'll be able to cancel something up and then we'll look at all of that now but meanwhile what limit is talking about is that if we begin to substitute numbers that are close to one that are around one into this very particular function whatever you get that's actually the limit that means as x is coming close to one what is this function going to become? Where is it going to be going close to? That's the mean of limit. What's the maximum value it is going to get to as x is approaching 1? Okay, so let's get some values around 1 and see what we are going to have. Let's use x equal to 1.1. Of course, this value is uh, around 1, approximately equal to 1. So if we put it here, we are simply going to have... Uh, uh, 4 into x minus uh, 1.1 minus 1 is uh, 0 0.1 all over and if you square this 1.1 square and then you subtract 1 from it you're going to get 0 0.21 and that's going to give you 0 0.4 all over 0 0.21 which is up uh, equal to 1.9 approximately Okay, so you see you're getting a value that is approximately equal to 2 if we take it to the nearest whole number. And so that's to tell you that the limit of this function is actually equal to 2. So this function will be tending to 2 as x is tending to 1. And so if you use any other value like 1.01, .01, which is around this particular x tending to 1, if you use that one, you are going to get this function, the limit to be 1.99, which is also very approximately equal to 2. Okay, so now that's what limit is about. And so how are we going to evaluate this limit to get the actual value that we are looking for? 
So now, in general, like I said, to evaluate a limit, all you need to do is to do a direct substitution. But if you now do a direct substitution and it is not giving you the required solution, it is giving you an undefined solution or an indeterminate, then you can now use other approaches such as factorization, L'Hopital's rule, and the rest of them, and we'll look at that. So let's check some examples. Okay, so look at these examples here. We're asked to evaluate the following limit. For number one, we have uh, the limit. Okay, so here you can see this is a polynomial. And like I earlier said, once you have a straight polynomial this way, it's not a fraction, it's not uh, containing any transcendental uh, uh, function, it's a straight polynomial. Just do your direct substitution, whatever you have is your solution. So that's going to give us 5 into 3 squared minus 2 times 3. And this is the same thing as 5 times 3 squared is 9 minus 6. And so 5 times 9 is 45 minus 6. We are going to have 39 as our solution for number 1. And then what about example 2? Okay, so what do we do here? Like I said, this is a rational function. Whenever you have a rational function, the first thing you need to check is the denominator. If I substitute, substitute my x as minus 2, is my denominator going to be going to give me a reasonable number that is not zero? If it gives you a reasonable number, then go ahead with the evaluation. But if it gives you zero, then it is undefined. Then you will need to use another approach of factoring or any other method. Okay, so let's check this. If we put x as minus 2 here, we'll have plus 6, and that will give us 11. So it is good to go. So let's go ahead and do our direct substitution, and that's going to give us uh, minus 2 raised to the power 3 plus 2 into minus 2 raised to the power 2 minus 1, all over 5 minus 3 times minus 2. Okay, and this is going to be equal to uh, minus 2 raised to the power 3 is minus 8. Minus 2 raised to the power 2 is uh, 4 minus 1. All over 5 plus 6. This minus 3 times this is 6. Okay, so let's come over here. Minus 2, this is 8. So minus 8 plus 8 is 0. So we have only minus 1 left there. Minus 1 all over. This one is 11. And that is the limit we are looking for. For the last example here, let's try to do that here. For number three, we are giving the limit of um, x squared minus x plus 2 all over x cubed plus x squared minus 3. Okay, as x goes to positive 1. So remember, like I said, once it's a rational function, try to substitute in the denominator first to see if you will have 0. So if we do that here, 1 here is 1. Here is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Minus 3 is minus 1. So we can go ahead with our direct substitution. Okay, and that's going to give us, we will have 1 squared minus 1 plus 2 all over 1 cubed plus 1 squared minus 3. Uh, 1 squared is 1 minus 1 uh, plus 2 all over 1 cube is 1 plus 1 minus 3 and this is equal to 1 minus 1 goes away and so we have only 2 left here 2 all over this is uh, 2 minus 1 which is mi minus 3 which is minus 1 and so our solution here is negative 2 okay and that's where we will stop in this video kindly subscribe to our youtube channel share our youtube videos and we'll see you in our next video bye